To make a forecast, we can choose to tick in what boxes we would like to make a forecast for, or what series. Or we can choose a ready template that we have here that's named consumption. So we'll click that and we have these five boxes ticked in. We could also say that to the system that we would like to see all forecast series or only the ones that are checked in this case. Now I have so few so I will keep all here. We can make a search for a specific series if we like. And then we will set the date and the period of the forecast. We can say that we would like a 48 hour forecast starting at hour one here. One important thing that we could do first is to have a look at historical outcome. And we can bring in the last two weeks, for example. So here we see two weekends and the belonging data in between. Down here we can see the global radiation, which is the yellow spikes. We can see the wind speed, the green graph, and the temperature is the red graph. And once again, we have the same data in a table form on the right hand side here. So it seems that the data looks uh, quite fine. We do not have any spikes that we need to, uh, to correct. The next thing to do is that we could either run a forecast or we can click on this icon here and we will check the data status to see if we have any runners data in the, in the historical database. So it could be that we have zero values, for example, and then the system will alert you that that is the case and you have the possibility to do something about it. In this case, we will simply run the forecast. So now we can see that two more days appeared here and this red line is where we are right now. So this is the, the hour that we are in at this case or the zero hour for the forecast that we are making. What we can do now is that we can move on and we can take away the historical data if we like. We can keep it and we can click on this view tab. So now you can see that the header has changed a little bit. So once again this is where you can validate the forecast and you can do that in a few different ways. You can do it by historic comparison. So this is where you can bring in different dates and compare the forecast and outcome for those days. Or you could have a forecast comparison. So this could be that you would like to see both the Iolos and the Celia model, not only combined. Or you can make a weather forecast. And adjusted weather means that you could, for example, uh, make a simulation and say that for these specific hours, I would like to see what happens with the load if we raise the temperature by three degrees. So you can basically see how weather dependent this specific series, or in this case some series, is. If you click on uh, alternative, you could bring in one specific forecast, production forecast that is made with one weather supplier. So in this case the gray line represents a weighted forecast between five different suppliers. But if we click on alternative, we could compare this one to number four, for example. And then we have some export functionality that we will show you in a, in a bit. We could actually start with historic comparison. And I will click here, add. And if this is a uh, forecast for Christmas Eve, we could choose to bring up some more Christmas Eves to see what does that data look like. Or we can choose the dynamic date. And this is where you can, from today's date, date which is zero, zero, we could go back one week in time if we like, or several weeks. Or we could go back, for example, one year in time and see what does that data look like. We will bring up one year here. So I will name that year minus one. And we click OK. So now we can see that we have two graphs up here. The gray line is still the forecast that we are working on. And the blue line is one year old data for the same two days. And as you can see the timestamp says 2012. And this is simply because it's demo data that we are looking at. 
We have some more information on the global radiation, wind speed and temperature. We can see that the temperature seems to be a little bit lower for the last year's data compared to this year. But we have a spike in the global radiation which brings up the temperature in a little spike here as well for a couple of hours. And we can see that for the colder period we have a quite large difference in the consumption between the forecast that we are making and the historical data from last year. What we can also do is that we can make this weather comparison and and we can make a simulation that's quite similar to the small spike that we have here in uh, the data from last year. So it seems like it starts somewhere around 1 p.m. and goes on for a couple of hours. And we will raise the temperature, let's say, 3 degrees. We click OK. So now we can see that we have three graphs. We still have the gray one and we have the blue one from last year. But now we also have a green and this is the simulation of the raise in temperature here. And if we look closely down here, we can see that we have the graph that is the temperature that is forecasted. And here we have the simulation that changes a little bit. So the dotted red line here is the simulation that we have made. We can view that a little bit more easily, maybe by taking away the global radiation like this. We can see that this uh, simulation has an effect on the consumption. We can see that for the hours that we are making the simulation for, the consumption gets a little bit lower here. And it still goes on a couple of hours later. So this is not only that something that affects the hours one to 3 p.m. It's still going on at 6, 7 p.m. in this case. We can uh, shoot this uh, simulation and what we can do then is that we can drag and drop the data points in the graph like this. Take each and every one and make a change. Or you can choose a specific area and make a, a change that is applied for, for uh, all those data points within that area. Once we have made a change, we can have a look here in uh, the table form and we can see that adjusted load in uh, percent, we can see that for these hours we have decreased it by one to three percent maybe. And here we can see the adjusted load and this is what the load is after we have made a change. And this is what the load was before. So this is the export that we will make in this case here. And the same goes for the totals. This is the originating load and this is the adjusted load that we have here. We can choose to make some more validations and what we will start with then is to take away last year's data here. And we can have a look at this box here. So what we can do here is that we can compare this forecast that we have made, which is a weighted forecast from five different weather suppliers. And we can compare what does this look like compared to number four, for example. Like this. Um, so as I said, this is the forecast, production forecast from the weighted between the five different suppliers. And we will compare that to the production forecast from only supplier number four in this case. So here we have it. We can see that it's a little bit higher for this particular period of time here. If we like, we could mark one specific area, as I said before, and we can make changes to that one, or we can zoom in like this. So here we can see simulation that we made before and we can use the arrows on the keyboard to step up or down and have a closer look at the data and make some small changes if you like. Once you feel ready to uh, export you could choose 
what data would you like to export in this case we have made a forecast for 48 hours uh, but I would only like to export 24 in this case here you can export in different formats like Excel XML or we can set up a script to send it directly to your trading system or whatever system that you would like this forecast to be sent to so that could be a uh, completely automatic workflow the forecast could be made completely automated and sent to the trading system or you can make it a little bit more manual like we have done now and make some validations and then click export so that's how we make a forecast in the system as I said there are some more things that I haven't showed you uh, right now that we can have a closer look at the personal demonstration let's move on to the follow-up tab so one important thing with forecast of course is to uh, make a follow-up and see how well we have been producing forecasts and that you can do with this generator here so we will choose what dates that we would like to have a look at and I will bring up the historical data in this case here and I would like to have a look at one week worth of data and always have a look at the day ahead forecast so you could have a look at different parts of a forecasting scenario so it could be uh, 48 hours it could be a kind of an intraday forecasting that you would like to make a follow-up and then you choose that we have our series checked up here and then we click calculate we can start with uh, series number one here and we can see that we have the historical the the real outcome and we have the gray or the black line here which is the exported one so we can see that the few days follows quite well and for a few days the demo data is a little bit off in this case here we could also compare what does the real wind speed looks like to the forecasted one and the same goes for the temperature down here on your right hand side we can see the mean absolute error for this specific series and we can click on the next one and see what it is for for that case so to sum up the follow-up functionality uh, the system could be configured so it produces tailored reports for your need uh, these could contain uh, the possibility to see each series if you like or it could be a total amount that you would like to have in uh, the module you can view automatic or manual forecast if you like so you can compare the forecast made by Iolos and the one that you have validated you can view any time interval that you like so you can compare a intraday forecast to a day ahead or two day ahead if you are talking about a forecast for a weekend for example uh, 